by one. Components that I can get to easily and that will be able to be removed so they're not connected to the motherboard, like the CD drive. And here I'm getting to the RAM. There's one stick in there. You just grab the two ends of the RAM holder and it'll pop up. Sometimes you have to use a device to get in there if it's too tight. And you pull the stick of RAM out. Then you have a wireless card. And wireless cards have that antenna. It's usually a black, gray, or white cord. It just pops right off. And again, the wireless card comes out just like the RAM does. Now we're going to get the hard drive out. And this laptop actually already has the hard drive taken out. So I'll take the cover off. Now what I really want to do is get the screen off because the screen's going to be in the way. I want to remove it from the equation. To get to the screen, in most laptops, you have to take this cover off. And that gives you access to both the keyboard and the screen. I call it the hinge cover plate because it covers the hinges. And the way to get that off is you need to just pry it off unless it's held in by screws. And that's why I turn the computer over. I'm going to remove any screw that appears like it's directly under the hinge cover plate that could be fastening it on. Because I've pried that hinge cover plate off in the past and sometimes it's screwed in from the bottom and it breaks. So rule number one, if you have to force anything off of these laptops, stop what you're doing. It's probably going to break. So I just play it safe and remove all the screws that could possibly be holding that hinge cover plate on. And the only way I'll be able to tell is when I go to attempt to take the hinge cover plate off. So just lining it up. I, I lined up how big that hinge cover plate is, and I'm just removing any screw that's directly under that. And this computer actually has a lot of them. Most computers don't have this many screws directly under the hinge cover plate. And that looks like all of them that could possibly be holding it in. So now we flip it over open it back up again, and now we attempt to remove the hinge cover plate, knowing that any screw that could possibly be holding it in is removed. And one way to get to it is to push down the keys and pry under the keys, being careful not to damage the keys when you do that. Or if that doesn't work, look for some other entry point, like there was right under the hinge. And then what you have to do is kind of jiggle it, and it'll pop off. Now we have access to the keyboard and it's going to take the four screws off that are holding the keyboard on. Now that hinge cover plate in some computers might have a ribbon cable attached to it or might be fastened in a different way, but they're all generally about the same. It's kind of snapped in there, sometimes with and sometimes without screws holding it in. And keyboards, sometimes they have screws like they are have in this one where I'm pulling them off now, and they always are attached by a wide ribbon cable that you just grab by both ends at the connector and pull it out. Now I'm disconnecting any ribbon cable I see. This is for the touchpad. Because when I take the top plate off of this computer, that ribbon cable is still going to be connected unless I remove it right now. Now I have access to the screen. And this is the LCD cable I'm pulling off now. And these two wires here go to the wireless card. You're going to find in a lot of laptops, the wireless antenna go through the, through the computer to the bottom, to the wireless card, all the way up to the top of the screen. So you have to kind of fish it through the computer and pull it back. This way you can get the screen off. If we didn't pull these wires back, we wouldn't be able to remove the screen. And then we'll start removing screws from the hinges on the screen. This particular computer has three hinges that go straight down and hold the screen to the base. One, and they're all pretty tight, which is a good thing. You want these screws to be tight on a computer because these are the ones that are holding the screen on. You don't want the screen to be flapping around. 
and then we'll pull the screws out of the other side. Now, if you'll notice what I'm doing with the screws after I'm taking them out of the computer, I'm putting them loosely in certain piles so I remember where they go. And we're going to talk more about this at the very end of this video, so don't get too hung up on uh, wondering what screws go back into the computer and what positions. We will address that because that's definitely a big question. Now the screen should come right up after we pull out this last screw. The screen pops right out. Now our objective is to remove the top part of the case from the bottom part of the case so we can get to the motherboard. So let's get that ribbon cable unattached. And this computer has a little circuit board here that needs to be removed, which we'll do now. Not all computers have this circuit board. This is where the power buttons are. I'm just going to take a screwdriver and just pop up the side a little bit and the whole plate should come right out. There we go. Now we're going to start removing screws from the top plate. Any screw that we see that appears to be holding the top part of the case to the bottom part of the case. And we're going to do our best to find every one. And we'll know if we miss one because the cases won't come apart. And now we want to turn it over and remove any other screw that appears to be holding the two cases together. Now, in generally, in most computers, most of these case screws are going to be about the same size, so you might be able to keep them all in the same pile. And you'll see in the case study videos, some laptops have markings next to each screw hole that tells you the size of screw that goes in there, and that makes it really easy for us. This computer doesn't, so we'll have to keep track of the screws with the system. And when it looks like you have all the screws out, try to pry the two cases apart. I don't have long nails, but I generally like to use my fingernail and kind of go along the edge and just find some entry point where there's already a little bit of an opening there, a gap that you can get your nail in and kind of bring it all around and try to get these two cases apart. Remember, don't force anything. And it looks like this is being held in by something, so let's check for screws. And yes, I forgot one screw on the top part of the case. Let's see what happens once we get that out. coming apart much easier now. So I'm glad that was in the video because I want to, you guys to know if it looks like it's not coming apart easy, there's probably a screw holding it in somewhere that you missed. Now we have access to the motherboard here. Let's put that off to the side and we'll attempt to remove the motherboard now from the top part of the case. This big black device here is just the speakers, and that attaches with a connector to the motherboard. 